In this video, we will be covering a custom setup in the DriveRack PA2. Your speakers and amps may not appear in the DriveRack PA2's list. If so, you'll need to do a custom setup in order to use the DriveRack to its full extent. Connect the main outputs of your mixer to the inputs of the DriveRack. Then connect the high outputs to your high amps or high speakers if they're powered. Connect the mid outputs to your mid amps or mid speakers if they're powered and connect the low outputs to your low amps, or directly to powered subs. If you're only using two mains with two subs, then you'll want to connect your main speakers to the high outputs of the drive rack PA2. After you've connected the drive rack to your amps and speakers, you're ready to continue with the custom setup. There are two options for setting up. You can choose a preset or go through the setup wizard. Presets will give you a great place to start. Pressing the preset recall button will take you to the preset menu. From there, you can choose the starting point for your application. Starting with preset 76, you'll see basic setup information. You will have choices from stereo full range to a three-way setup with a mono or stereo sub. Choose the application that best fits your setup by pressing the select knob. We will select six full range outputs to show you the result. On the left-hand side of the diagram, you'll see the left and right stereo inputs, with the left and right highs, left and right mids, and left and right lows on the right. Now we'll show you how to set up a configuration through the wizard option. Press the wizard button to start. Scroll down to Run Setup Wizard and press Select. Choose Run All Setup. Choose New Settings. Select Mono or Stereo depending on your application. We will choose Stereo for this example. You can then choose between Dual Mono and Stereo Linked GEQ. We will choose Stereo here. You will then be asked to select the main speaker brand. We'll choose JBL for this example. This is where you would select the main speaker model, but since our speaker is not included in the list, we'll choose Not Listed. If you will be running one set of mains with subs, then choose Passive Mode. If you're biamping or running highs and mids with subs, then choose two-way. Choose yes if you're using subs. Our subs are also JBL, but they're not included in the model list. So we'll choose not listed again. For this example, we're going to be using stereo subs. Next, we'll be selecting the amplifiers. Since they're not listed, we'll also choose that option for highs, mids, and lows. If you're using powered speakers, then choose not listed as well. Select Yes to apply the changes. Press the back button twice to see the configuration you've just made. In order to set the crossover correctly for each speaker, you'll need to know what frequencies your speakers can reproduce. This can usually be found in the spec sheet for the speaker that you happen to be using. We're using high speakers that are able to reproduce frequencies that are 2 kHz and above. So we're going to set the high pass frequency for the high driver to 3 kHz. With a steep roll off down to around 2 kHz. Our mid speakers are able to reproduce frequencies from 250 Hz to 2 kHz. We'll set the mid high pass frequency to 250 Hz and the low pass frequency to 2 kHz. Our subs are able to reproduce frequencies from 40 Hz to 250 kHz. So we'll set the high pass frequency to 40 Hz with a steep roll off. and leave the low pass at the default, which is 100 kHz, with a semi-steep roll-off. If your speakers are powered, you can simply send full range signal to each of them and let the internal crossover on the speaker do the work. The PEQ menu can also be adjusted for specific speaker types. PEQ specifications can sometimes be found in the spec sheet as well. Here's an example of what PEQ may look like. In this example, EQ1 would be set to bell at a frequency of 2.73 kHz, attenuated by minus 6 dB with a bandwidth of 0.3. EQ2 
2 would be set to high shelf at a frequency of 9.84 kHz, increased by 8 dB. Q3 would be set to bell at a frequency of 4.75 kHz. attenuated by minus 2.5 dB with a bandwidth of 0.2 and EQ4 would be set to bell at a frequency of 11.3 kHz attenuated by minus 3 dB with a bandwidth of 0.4 this would be done for each output that requires PEQ settings. If you're unable to find crossover or PEQ settings in the spec sheet, then you'll need to contact the speaker manufacturer to obtain them. Before running any other wizards, you'll want to set up your gain structure, which includes setting the limiters of the PA2. For information on how to set up your gain structure, please click on the link in the description below. After you've set up your gain structure and made sure the system is balanced, you're ready to run the auto EQ. You'll want to skip the level assistant since you've already set up the gain structure manually. Click the wizard button and select Run Auto EQ slash Level Assistant. This menu will allow you to run the Auto EQ by itself. Connect your RTA microphone and place it in between your speakers, like the display shows, then press Select. At this point, you want to wait until the drive rack sets the test tone level. When that is completed, choose number 3 for the RTA mic measurements. Keep the mic in the middle of your speakers and press select for mic position 1. Move the mic as shown on the display and press select for mic position 2. Move the mic one last time and press select for mic position 3. The drive rack will then calculate the auto EQ settings and display the changes it has made. Press select to finish the auto EQ. The AFS will eliminate any feedback you may encounter. To run the AFS, click the wizard button and choose Run AFS Wizard. It will then ask you to perform a sound check with all of your microphones on stage. After you've completed a rough sound check, press Select. Bypass any active noise gates and press Select again. Lower your master faders completely and press Select. You can choose No to select a specific number of filters or use the default, which is 6. For this example, we'll use the default. Choose your AFS filter type. We will be using music and speech. Slowly raise your master faders and you'll hear the speaker begin to feed back. Lower your mixer's output to the correct performance level and press select. Press select one last time to exit the AFS wizard. You're now ready to run your system with the DriveRack PA2. If you have any questions, please visit www.dbxpro.com.